Rossi here with you on WLSN, and kind enough to join us is the head football coach of the Lancers, Pat McLaughlin. And uh, coach, Friday night, the outcome that you didn't want, uh, 31 to 10 uh, home loss to the Shamrocks of Trinity. Yeah, it's another tough loss. And, uh, you know, we won the first two and then uh, had to struggle the last two, especially offensively. But uh, we met as a team on, uh, on Monday, and the bottom line is all of our goals are still ahead of us. Um, you know, we went and played in the GCL, make the playoffs. Um, so, got to learn from it, got to move on, keep working hard. Um, and, and then so far, we've had a good week of practice. Coach, it seemed like to me, I thought the swing of that game came in the third quarter, yeah. and I thought it was with their special teams yeah. setting up their offense, short fields. And I really thought that that was the turning point, um, which also included in that quarter, uh, you know, the block field goal. Yeah, a couple of plays. You know, the one, one thing is we, we've been solid on special teams. You know, in the like last five or six years, we've been solid. Coach Hydorn does a good job. He still did a good job. It's just it was an off night on special teams. So um, I would say we, first time in a long time we lost a special teams battle. And a couple other things, too, that were big in that third quarter. We get the pick out the gate, I think, and uh, we're turned down to the 12. And then as you talk about, you know, forget about the the blocked uh, PA, the blocked extra or, uh, field goal. We should have we should have scored a touchdown there. You got the one on the twelve yard line. Coy, Coy intercepts it. We got to score a touchdown there. I think that makes the game what ten to seven at that point in time. And there's another play later in the third quarter. I think it was where you know BJ's on the sidelines. He gets he pushes the guy out of bounds. The ball's in probably the third row of the track, and they call uh, pass uh, pass interference. There it was not pass interference. G, BJ did what he was coached to do. So. I think those three plays uh, really were big because that was third down. They get a first down, they go down and score. Otherwise, that's fourth down. We make them kick, and now we're still in the game. Yeah, and I thought that, you know, you look back, you look at the numbers defensively, I thought you guys, you know, barely gave over 200 yards. Yeah. And once again, it seems like another solid outing from your defense. Yeah. They were just forced uh, a lot of times they had to defend uh, a short field. I think I saw, you know, average starting field position, if I remember correctly, for Trinity was – you know, their own 48-yard line. Yeah, you can't keep doing that against a good team. Uh, defense, I think they gave up 80 yards in the first half, uh, which is fantastic. Against a team that's averaging, uh, I mean, a, a, ton, a ton of yards per game. So uh, you put them in a bad spot, keep the defense on the field too long, whether it's on uh, in bad spots with special teams or the offense, you know, can't get anything going. Uh, too many three and outs, too many negative plays against, again, on offense, and we've got to find a way to fix that. Offensively, did you feel um, – like you've made any progress from the Fairmont game? Do you think you've stayed the same? Are there you know, further adjustments coming? You know, where where were you, where you thinking on the offensive side of all? Yeah, I think we were better, and you know, better is a relative term. How much better were we? Is it better, good enough? Obviously, it's not. So, you know, at this point in time, you take away Canada, and we're averaging seven points a game on offense. Obviously, we know uh, but that's not good enough. We we met as an offense again on, on Monday, and everything's wide open. There's competition. It's been a good week of practice. Uh, nobody's job is secure. We're doing everything we can as a coaching staff uh, to put the guys in a position to be successful. We're going to continue to work hard. The kids are working hard. Um, and I think you'll see a better offensive uh, performance on Friday night against DuPont. Is this one of those things where you just, you know, based on what you see in practice, we could see some different guys starting uh, on the offensive side of the ball come Friday night? Yeah, I don't want to say, you know, who or what or where, but again, we. Open everything up. Uh, everybody's competing for their job. Uh, we know we have to make some probably changes, changes, adjustments on our end as coaches. Uh, we can't keep doing the same things. Uh, so maybe um, you know, be a little bit more basic. Uh, be a bit, be, be a little more intentional on what we do and how we do it. Uh, go back to the fundamentals of blocking and uh, you know limited negative plays on offense. And again, I think we'll see, we'll, we'll be better on Friday night. Injury-wise, how did you guys come out of the game from Friday night? I know that uh, Kyle got a little banged up uh, about his where he's at, punter Kyle Reynolds, and then uh, any of the rest of you guys. Yeah, that was Lundsman, actually. That was Lundsman that punched, that kicked that ball. So uh, Lundsman, uh, Mason Lundsman is, is banged up. Um, a couple other guys are banged up. We don't know if they're going to play or not. Um, they're, 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 they practice today. Every, everybody practiced today. Everybody that was injured uh, practiced today. Does that mean they're going to go on Friday? Not necessarily. So uh, right now, you expect this. Going into week five, it's been uh, four physical weeks. Um, it's going to be four more physical weeks of uh, football. Um, but we're banged up, but uh, the kids are tough. Uh, they're fighting through it. Uh, Dan and Alex are doing a good job getting the guys back on the field to practice and taking care of those injuries. 
Coach, you, you face a uh, DuPont Manual team out of uh, Louisville, third year that you've seen them. You've played two very tight games yeah. with them and been able to come out on the winning side of Ledger. New head coach for them this year. You know, what changes have you seen uh, with the new with the new head coach with what they're running on both sides of the ball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. another good team. <laughs> they're 4-0. I think they, they've scored 40 points or more every game and they haven't given up many points. So. Uh, it's a similar structure on defense, be an even front defense, too high. Uh, probably be the biggest team that we play this year collectively, especially their defensive line and offensive line. Uh, they are massive, uh, massive human beings. So they'll be big, but offensively, in the last couple of years, they've been uh, two tight ends, two backs, running the ball, ISO lead, power, uh, limited in, in terms of throwing the ball. Well, now that they're, they're spread, um, they're, I think, think they're no huddle. It's hard to tell in the film, but they're definitely spread, uh, throwing the ball down the field. They got some good receivers. Uh, it'll be very similar to what we do on offense in terms of inside zone to outside zone, a little bit of counter stuff. Um, they're, they're, they're running the curl flat, they're running uh, vertical routes, they're running a few intermediate and some screens. So it'll be very similar to what we see on offense. Yeah, I know that they had graduated John Northington, who you'd seen the, the previous two years, saw he ended up at uh, Murray State. And, um, you know, what I'd seen is it looked like the replacement at that uh, running back position doesn't look like it's been a whole lot of a drop off. No, you know what? You watch the film and uh, he's number 22 as well. So the running back this year is 22. It looks very similar. Like, I think this kid's been here for like six years. <laughs> Although in Kentucky, you can't do that. You can't play yeah, five years. Give you did have that, that. And, and they did have um, a couple of those players. Yeah, um, they did last year. Last they, year. They do this year as well. So they got a couple of guys, uh, super seniors or whatever they're called. Um, so, but he, he's, he's a good player. The quarterback's a good player. They got some length at receiver. Guys can go up and get the ball. And again, like I said, the offensive and defensive lines are massive. I mean, it's going to be they, they they get our hand they get their hands on us on offense or defense when we're in trouble. So we're going to have to move, use our speed, uh, use our athleticism, uh, and kind of get some pressure on the quarterback that way, and also be physical at the point of attack. And their their nose is 350. Wow, I, I saw them on film and I did not realize that they were that big. Okay. It's um, boy, that's always interesting. And I think. How much of a help is that for you, seeing a line that big, knowing that the GCL is coming and you're going to see, you know, bigger, more athletic guys on both sides of the line as these weeks go forward? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's going to help us out. Uh, hopefully it helps us out. Hopefully it helps out, 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 out this week. We know we figure out how to solve the, uh, solve the, the, the riddle of their offense and defense. But we're going to see good teams, uh, physical teams, good, uh, good big bodies that can run and move. And even though the, the young man's 350, he still moves around pretty well, eats up a lot of space in, in there. So we're going to have to play with good pad level, uh, especially on the offensive line, and get a lot of movement, a lot of double teams at the point of attack. And for folks that haven't made that trip down there, that was one of the more enjoyable stadiums that I've seen yeah. for a very unique looking thing. It's got to kind of get that castle type look at right. look to it around it. And, you know, big stadium seats, 11,000. It's, uh, is that one that you've taken notice and said, boy, this is kind of a unique place to play? Or, or is that something that, hey, I, you know, head down, I'm coaching, yeah. I really only have a chance to look around at that kind of thing? No, you definitely, uh, you know, where it's located, you definitely like a, a slice of like 1960, 70 Americana football high school. Got the huge, uh, it's a huge center block stadium on both sides. Like you said, it's white. Uh, they got uh, Bermuda grass, which is, you know, we, we, have, we, we don't play on grass anymore. No. The last time we played on grass might have been uh, down on DuPont Manual. So it's a great surface to play on. Our kids aren't really used to it. You go south, like I used to coach in Tennessee and coach football University of Memphis. You go down to Alabama, you go down to Tennessee. They, they at least used, they used to have that Bermuda grass. It's really, really fine. Um, so, the, so the turf is good. The turf is fast. And the stadium, you know, it's, it's a really nice place to play a high school football game. Is there certain adjustments you got to make sure that you guys have cleat wise when they go going from the field turf to the grass? Because I've seen that in the past. That's kind of come back to haunt uh, LaSalle in, in some past years with some past coaches where the uh, the footwear we saw a lot of a lot of players slip over over the years. I don't think so. If I remember correctly, the last time we played down there, we didn't have, we we didn't have any issues. And I think it's. That's something that if you make it an issue and you make it make it a problem and it's going to get in the kids' head, we haven't even told the, the kids yet, the players, that it's a gra it's grass. So if some of the guys went, then they know. Maybe they watched the film. It's even hard to tell on the film, but you know I, I don't think so. I think we'll be fine. Uh, have our normal routine. We go down there. We're the same cleats when we go down there. 
Uh, and the bottom line is going to come down there. We got to go down there and play hard. Keys to victory. Yeah, we, we have to stop the run. Um, if we get that, if number 22 gets going, like you said, he's, he's a good player. Um, so we got to win the line of scrimmage, stop the run. Uh, we got to eliminate big plays. They have a tendency to make some big plays uh, and, and then turnovers. The one thing we've done all year is we've turned them over uh, and we haven't turned the ball over a ton. So that, that, that has been a positive. Offensive, we have to be able to run the ball. Uh, that's been our Achilles heel up to this point. Um, and we were going to make an intentional effort uh, to run the ball. And I think I'll, I'll change it up this week a little bit. And in addition to the other things, we got to be better on first down. I know we're in some long yard situations on second and third down, but uh, we got to get four or five yards on first down. We can't be in uh, second and long. So it's been an emphasis this week uh, to be better on first down. So we have a fourth or third down in one situation or second down in three situation that's manageable. Coach, uh, best of luck. Thank you. Against the Crimsons. Thank you very much. Head coach Pat McLaughlin. And uh, stay with us, and we will be bringing you LaSalle Lancer football next week here at Lancer Stadium on WLSN. So make sure you join us then. Head coach Pat McLaughlin, I'm Jeff Bossy here on WLSN.